And welcome back. Today we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back one page. One thing that we have to do before we do permutations and combinations is, is understand a little bit of vocabulary behind them. Okay, now, uh, factorial, this is something we're going to see in the formulas when we use permutation and, and combinations. Okay, Factorial simply means the product of the natural numbers less than or equal to that number. So for example, this is 5 factorial. 5 factorial. There we go. Okay. And it's just an exclamation point. The factorial symbol is just an exclamation point. So in English, it means one thing. In mathematics, it means something totally different. 5 factorial simply just means take 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Take this number and all the preceding numbers and multiply them together. And in this case, 120. Now, one special case, though, 0 factorial is just going to be equal to 1. Okay, that's just a kind of a special note. Factorial kind of breaks down, doesn't really work <laughs> if when we get to 0. So we just kind of say, oh, special case, 0 factorial is just 1. One, just off to the side there, a little asterisk. Anyway, permutation. So the difference between permutation and combination breaks down to this. Permutation is a selection of a group of objects in which order is important. So this would be something like first, first, second, or third place in a race or something like that. Okay, order is definitely important because whoever gets first, second, and third. Um, Say, for example, if Johnny if Johnny got first and Sam got second and then Phil got third, that's actually different from if Phil got first, Johnny got second, and Sam got third. Those are two, these right here are two different events that could happen. Okay, And so for pure permutations, it takes into account that these two are going to be two different um, uh, two different events. On the other hand, combinations is a group of items in which order does not matter. So, for example, if I want to choose um, three people, um, let's actually write out the word. If I want to choose three people to say, go get something for me. So maybe if I'm, okay, so you're probably watching this, you're probably a student. So if your teacher asks um, three people to go, go to the library, three people to go to the library. Okay, so the thing is, if, if uh, that, that person could either pick uh, Johnny, Sam, or Phil, Phil, Johnny, or Sammy, or Sammy, John, and, and Phil. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that the teacher could pick these three. But the thing is, is that this is all one group. With combinations, order does not matter. So the thing is, it doesn't matter what order the teacher picks all of these kids in. It's still just going to be one group. It doesn't matter if he picks, if the teacher picks Johnny first or Phil first or Sam first or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just a combination of kids that are going to go to the library, go get some paper, go get a book, or, or whatever the case is. Okay. So permutations, uh, order really does matter. Combinations, on the other hand, order does not matter. So that's the big difference between both of them. Okay. Now on to a couple of examples. Okay. The, this is the number of permutations of n items that are taken r at a time. All right. So here's the thing. This is permutations. This is a permutation example. This is the formula that we use for permutations. Okay. A little bit different notation here. Permutation for the big P. N is the number of items that are taken at a time. You can think of n as your big group. N is your big group of items, of people, of kids, of whatever you're talking about. R in this case is how many you're selecting. Okay, uh, I'll just put selection. So, like, oh, I'm not spelling that right. There we go. Spelling is not my strong suit. Here we go. Selection. There we go. All right, so, um, so we we'll, we'll go ahead and get to the example. How many ways can a student government select a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer from a group of six people? Okay. Now, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, is this a permutation or a combination, and why? Okay. Now, obviously, this is going to be a permutation, but we'll go over why. This is a permutation because, in this case, order does matter. So I'm going to go back to my, my earlier group. So Johnny, Sammy, Phil, and Trevor... Okay, those are the four people that are chosen for president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. But if I have Trevor, Johnny, Phil, and Sam, so Trevor is now the president, Johnny is the vice president, Phil is the secretary, Sam is the treasurer, that's a totally different group. Yes, the same people were chosen, but again, that's a totally different group. So in this case, it does matter what order we choose these kids in. So in this case, since order does matter, this is going to be a permutation. All right, so what I'm going to do, 
is use this notation here, use this little formula to figure out how many different groups can be made. Okay, Out of a group of six people, if I choose a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer from those six people, how many different ways can I do this? Okay, So this is what the notation is going to look like. P, and then, now N is your big group. My big group of people in this case is six. R is my selected selection. In this case, I'm choosing four people. Okay, four people. I'm choosing a president, vice president, treasury, <laughs> secretary, and treasurer. All right, so that gives me four people. So this is what the math is going to look like. So I'll have six factorial on top, six exclamation point on top, and then I have n minus r parentheses factorial. So this is going to be six minus four parentheses factorial, which ends up being, which ends up being six factorial over. 2 factorial. 6 minus 4 is going to give me 2. Get rid of this example over here. It's going to get my way. All right. So now with 6 factorial and 2 factorial, I'm going to write this all out. Now, as you get better and better with these permutations and combinations, you won't have to write all this out. You'll realize here in a moment there's some numbers going to cancel, but that's for when you are more experienced after you go through more examples. So in this case, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's 6 factorial. On the bottom, that's going to have 2 factorial, which is just 2 times 1. Okay, now one thing that you notice is that the twos are going to cancel and the ones are going to cancel. Okay, now this is what I was talking about earlier. Sometimes you're not going to have to write all the numbers because you realize that some of the numbers are actually going to cancel. So in this case, I have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, and then that's it. This is going to tell me how many different choices I have for president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. So this is going to be 30 times 12. Okay, 30 times 12 is 360 different choices. I have 360 different choices for my president, vice president, secretary, treasurer out of the six people. Okay, so that's an example of a permutations type of problem. Okay, now let's go over a combinations problem. Now let's go over a combinations problem. So the number of combinations of n items taken r at a time. So notice that this formula that we have is actually very, very similar to what we had in the last page. Okay, but in this case, we're doing combinations this time. Now n and r are basically the same. n is going to be your big group. Okay, so this is the number of people you're selecting from, or this is the total number of, of geese, or, or whatever the problem asks for. R, in this case, is how many you're selecting. So again, your selection. Okay, how many, how many geese you're selecting, or how many people you're selecting, or whatever the, whatever the scenario is. Now, the only big difference here is we do have this R factorial right here on the bottom that, um, we have this R factorial here on the bottom that... Um, changes up our combinations just a little bit. Okay, all right. So here's an, here's our example. The swim team has eight swimmers. Okay, eight people on the swim team. Two of them will be selected to swim in the first heat. How many ways can they be selected? Okay, so I got eight people on my swim team. I'm going to select two of them to go into the first heat of a race. Now, the first thing you got to ask yourself is: this, Is this going to be a permutation or a combination type of problem? Okay. Well, this is actually a combination type of problem because if I have if I have Trevor and Sam on my swim team and they're selected, well, if I also choose Sam and Trevor, um, this is actually the same. This is actually only one group. Okay. Now, Trevor and Sam, Sam and Trevor, it doesn't matter who gets chosen first. Both of them are just going to go into the first heat. So, yeah, it really doesn't matter who I choose first. All that matters is that I chose both of them. So, again, what, what, this, what combinations takes into account is that these two choices is actually one group. So, notice that this R factorial on bottom, that little extra that we have there, actually takes care of that for us so that we aren't... Doing, we aren't counting multiple selections as, as 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 multiple choices. These two selections are actually just going to be one group. Okay, so here's the math behind it. So for a for a combination type of problem, and again, order does not matter here. I have my big group, which has eight. So I'm I have eight swimmers on my team, and then two of them. I'm choosing two at a time to go into my first heat. So this is what the math looks like. So I got eight factorial on top. On the bottom, I have two factorial. There's my r factorial there. Inside the parentheses, I still have 8 minus 2 and then factorial. So again, this bottom part, that, this right here is the same as what we had for our previous problem. The 2 factorial, on the other hand, is just a little bit different. So in this case, I have 8 factorial on top, 
two factorial on bottom and six factorial on bottom. Okay, these are multiplying together. Okay, let me get rid of this group over here. It's going to get in my way. All right, so now what I'm going to do now again. As you get more experience with this, you can probably realize, okay, there's some numbers I, that are going to cancel, but you know what? I'm going to write them all out so we can see why they cancel. So 8 factorial, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then on the bottom, I have 2 times 1, and then all, that's 2 factorial, and then I also have 6 factorial, with 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Notice the 6s and 5s and 4s and 3s and 2s and 1s are all going to cancel. Again, you might see that beforehand and realize that you don't need to write all of that. That might save you some time as you're working through these problems. Okay, but on the other hand, this is 8 times 7, which is 56. 56 divided by 2 is only 28. So there's only 28 different choices, 28 different groups of two kids uh, that I can choose to put into this first heat. Okay, choice says... Get the grammar right. All right, there we go. All right, so that is permutations and combinations. Kind of put all of them in one video. I know it's a little bit longer, uh, but at least I put all of them in one video. All righty. Uh, thank you for watching this video on permutations and combinations, and we'll see you next time.